Hey folks, welcome back to Gaming Garbage, where we take a look at games, chat about the gaming news in the industry, and of course, stream for fun. Today we're going to be talking about the Sony PlayStation Showcase that we had, the State of Play. This was for May 30th. This is the second one that we've had now this year already, and we're probably going to get a third maybe toward the end of the year. We'll have to see, but we see so many showcases now, and I'll cover most of the big ones throughout the year, every year. Um, so that you guys don't have to. I give you guys a consolidated thing. And, uh, you know, the reason we're on the Borderlands screen, it's better than just looking at nothing. And so, uh, here you can see, the, you know, Claptrap jumping around. And so, hey, enjoy the visuals if you're, if you're watching. Otherwise, just enjoy the podcast. You can always follow me, too, at GamingGarbage22 over at YouTube. And also at, uh, on Twitch, don't tread on the, and then don't forget our Discord server. Um, which isn't just a chat and, and mingle, it's also just to find others to play with, regardless of game, regardless of platform. So, the showcase. Let's get into this. So, this, in my opinion, was an F+. And I'll get into why toward the end. But let's go over what we got to see during the showcase. Now, this was more of a state of play. So, kind of like the business side, maybe a little bit, or kind of like what we've already heard about or just maybe some updates about what's going on with PlayStation um, for maybe the rest or most of the year um, that's left. Uh, the, well, what do they call it? The actual showcase shows like a lot of newer stuff. Like we know that. Um, so again, even with that considered, I still consider this an F um, and it was really worth skipping. So let's get into why. So, first we got to see Concord. Man, this actually looked really, really good. Okay, we see, you know, multiple characters. It's in the future. We see spaceships. We see kind of aliens and humans and and <clears throat> machines as our characters. And they're all in a bar. You know, you can see they have different personality types. They get into, into a firefight so we get to see some of the skills or maybe some of the gadgets in the game. We also get to see them flying around after the fact. And basically, they're kind of like mercenaries or bounty, hunter, bounty hunters, and they're able to do things or, or um, you know, take on missions and get paid. And that actually sounds really interesting. And then we get to see some of the devs. They come onto the screen and say that it's a 5v5 shooter. Okay, so I immediately thought of, like, Overwatch. And we already have enough of these, in my opinion. Okay, we have Splatoon. We have Foam Stars. We have the Finals. There's Valorant. There's... You know, uh, again, there's uh, Apex and Fortnite. Like, we already have a ton of team-on-team -team shooters, whether it's more of an arena style or whether it's more team-based or objective-based. Even X-Defiant, like, we got that too, where there's different skills and abilities and different weapons to choose from. So it's like this is not this... It's not like this is really a new idea. We've had this for quite some time, even all the way back to, like, Team Fortress 2. So when I heard that, all of the excitement just totally left me. Like... Concord was immediately off my list. Just no longer cared. And this, too, means it's going to be a live service game. And not just, like, live service with, like, extra narratives or, like, a mission behind the season pass paywall or kind of a thing. Meaning, it's just skins, right? It's just going to be a whole bunch of skins, things to grind for, multiple currencies probably in the game, etc. And so, yeah, basically you accept challenges or work toward daily challenges, weekly challenges like we've already seen in, like, Warzone and Fortnite, etc. And then you play on different maps, and he yeah, has five versus five. And uh, that's already, a, in my opinion, a pretty boring model. This is going to come out in August 23rd of 2024. And this is going to be for PS5 and for PC. And this probably will also be a cross-platform game. We can probably expect that. But yeah, Concord, man, what a letdown for me. It's just like, ugh. We already have this, but we got something better. Uh, the next thing we got to see was Kratos, the God of War, and I was so stoked for this. Uh, you know, I, I love the God of War series even way back when, and the reboot has also been really good. I've enjoyed those. And then we found out that basically it's Ragnarok, and it's coming to PC. Okay, well, 2024. Great. Um, doesn't pertain to me at all. It's not anything new. Uh, next, we got to see the uh, the Ballad of Antara, which is 2025. This looks like a Dark Souls Elden Ring style type of game. And uh, yeah, it did look good, but again, it's next year. Nothing really to write home about. Uh, next, we got to see Marvel Rivals, which is a free-to-play game, which again is all Marvel characters, uh, different kind of abilities or whatever, 5v5, just like Overwatch. So again, it's like... 
Okay, great. And this is actually already out. This came out on May 30th. And so if you want to test it out um, on... Uh, I think it came out on the 30th. I could be mixing it up with another one. But yeah, this this has got some open beta. This is coming out on PC. Um, and yeah, it'll also be coming to Xbox and PlayStation as well. Next, we got to see Where Winds Meet. Uh, and this is like a Sekiro game. So think of like Japan, Korea, China, something like that, right? Where the characters have swords and they are got this kind of kung fu like a dragon mastery kind of a thing going on and it actually looks fairly enticing um and so yeah i'd attribute it to sekiro and then we get a thing that in development so it doesn't even have a year yet so this is not you know maybe late 2025 at the best uh more like 2026 and that's it with like no delays and if there's more issues maybe late 26 maybe 27 I mean, we'll have to see. But yeah, that was just like, okay, great. This is already, you know, probably a couple years away. We're not even going to see it until then. Next, we got to see Until Dawn, which comes out fall 2024. This is a a remaster, basically. Probably a few things tweaked. This is also coming to PlayStation 5 and PC. But again, it's like, okay, yeah, we got a remaster. Nice. We also got to see Path of Exile. This is coming out, already has been out for Xbox and PC. Now this is also coming to PlayStation for 2024. So, okay, yeah, Path of the Exile, another free-to-play Diablo 4 game. If you don't want to pay for Diablo 4 don't have access, uh, don't worry, you can uh, you can play this. Um, it's actually quite good. Huge skill tree. Uh, you're going to have a lot to grind through. So yeah, plenty of content, plenty of grind to to keep you busy if you're interested. Next, we got to see Silent Hill 2. Okay, again, we already knew about this one. This was another remake. This is coming out October 8th, 2024. So development is actually going pretty good for this one. I did feel like some of the character models didn't necessarily look too good in some areas, uh, especially with the female character in the story. Um and not to say, you know, being political or woke or whatever, that's not what I'm saying. I'm actually saying, like, the rendering of her character and also some of the things in the game that I got to see um, during the trailer. It's It just doesn't, I don't know, doesn't quite look good. Other parts of it look really, really good. Really good use of lighting, um, you know, and, and dynamic lighting and... Uh, yeah, enemies look really, really good. But yeah, just a few of the things didn't quite look current gen to me. Uh, but yeah, that's October 8th, 2024. Next, we got to see Monster Hunter Wilds. We got to see a really long trailer for this. Uh, but again, this is coming out in 2025. Uh, but it does look good. Like, I'm excited for that. Next, we got to see uh, also another one was Dynasty Warriors. I can't remember the subtitle, uh, but this, again, is 2025. And this Dynasty Warriors game, again, showed somebody just hacking and slashing through enemies a whole bunch. Reminded me of, like, 99 Knights or Hyrule Warriors, that type of style of game. I did see some frame rate issues um, and, and some possible I issues with animations for NPCs. So this game is definitely not ready to be released as a double or triple A game. Uh, but, uh, you know, they still have some time to work on it, probably roughly another year or so. But yeah, 2025. Lastly, we got to see Astrobot, uh, which this is coming out September of 2024. Um, a lot of mini games, some expanded exploration, some things to do. Of course, other people to play with too. Um, I I would see this as a good holdover type of game, and uh, but yeah, that was the showcase. It's about thirty five minutes, um, and yeah, the reason I'm giving it an F is because we got the biggest game at the start, which was Concord, um, and Concord I feel like should have been in the middle or toward the end. Uh, and then, two Concord is just the wrong type of style of game for me. Maybe not for everybody, um, but Overwatch 2 is not super popular right now. Uh, you know, and we have X Defiant, uh, which is free. Concord is actually going to cost money. But we have Overwatch is, is free, X Defiant is free, Marvel Rivals is going to be free. And you're going to have to pay for Concord. And it's also going to be monetized on top of that with season passes, etc. 
most likely. So I don't really see the benefit. Uh, the the game's really got to bring something new and different to the table. Otherwise, why pay money for a game that same style you can get for free somewhere else? Take your pick, take your pick of of style or theme, right? So yeah, it just really didn't make a lot of sense. Uh, there's really nothing new for 2024. We got to see remakes of Until Dawn and Silent Hill 2. Those are both pretty good games. Until Dawn is more of kind of like the quarry type of style, where it's kind of more story-driven. You get to walk a little bit, or like kind of like a Hellblade 2. It's kind of more of like a story game where you kind of get to make some decisions, <coughs> and that will affect your character. Silent Hill 2, just wonderful horror game. Enjoy screaming. Um, but yeah, not a lot for 2024. Pretty much everything else is in 2025, or maybe even later than that, like 26. We did get some PlayStation VR games. Um, we got a couple of them, but again, these aren't going to do very well because they've only sold about 250,000 units so far. Uh, their units aren't selling. They already said earlier this year they're going to work on cutting back production um, because they're just, yeah, they're just not selling. They're not going anywhere, the paperweights. They're literally stacking up in the warehouses where they're manufactured. So that's a problem. So yeah, the PSVR games aren't going to sell. It's also hard to swallow pay, you know, buying an expensive paperweight for something that really doesn't have a lot of interesting or intriguing games. I, I, I'm excited for the future of VR, but I think we're going to have to wait until the 2030s uh, to, to start seeing some jumps in technology and affordability. Monster Hunter Wilds uh, was probably the best game in the showcase. Got a really good extended trailer. Got to see a lot of good gameplay. Some narrative there, too. Um, but we're going to see this game a lot because, again, it's coming out in 2025. We also, there were two free games. Path of the Exile and Marvel Rivals. Um, which, you know, free isn't bad or anything. Uh, but like Path of the Exile, most of us have probably already played that or heard about it, so it kind of takes the wind out of that. And then also Marvel Rivals is actually, uh, it's competition for Concord. So why would you take Marvel's money, um, I guess unless you really need it, and then, uh, you know, compete it against your own game in your own showcase? That doesn't make any sense. I certainly wouldn't do that. No way. We also didn't see anything on Marathon. We already know it's coming. It's supposed to be coming out in 2025, but we didn't see anything on it. We also didn't see anything for the Final Shape DLC. That's actually supposed to be coming out pretty soon. We also didn't see any Square Enix games. So so Square Enix, um, you know, they, uh, they had an aggressive uh, change in business model to be like, hey, we're not just going to exclusively make games anymore just for Sony. We're going to get away from that, and we're going to expand it out to PC and Xbox. Uh, because every company needs to make money. If you're curious, um, I'll I'll leave it <coughs> either at the end of this video or in the description of like uh, my state of gaming that I did, which is another podcast, uh, and where these are more deep dives into the gaming industry and companies. And this one is about the shifting industry and where it's just becoming more expensive. And there is actual pressure on a lot of these publishers and companies. Some are making hand over fist and it's just greed for them. And others, this is out of desperation. Uh, so, And everybody has already had layoffs or closed studios or has actually sold um, parts of their portfolio. Like Gearbox is no longer owned by Embracer Group. It's now owned by Take-Two Interactive. And so there are changes and shifts in the industry, and part of it is to stay alive, and part of it is just to try to be, continue to be sustainable. Uh, but we've heard that word repeatedly. And so if you're trying to be sustainable, um, but you're not showing anything new, you're not having any type of direct or whatever, maybe they're waiting until later in the year. Maybe they're going to wait till Game Fest, which is in a week. Uh, which I'll be covering that too. But it's just like, there was really nothing exciting about this showcase. There was really nothing to get too excited about. A lot of it we had already heard or seen. Um, so, uh, yeah, and then their biggest one, Concord, just took the wind right out of their sails when it's like an Overwatch game. Overwatch is already failing, and there's others out there that are also free to play, and Concord we're going to have to pay for. Because you can pre-order it. Um, if you didn't have to pre-order it, it... It wouldn't be pre-orderable if it's free, but it's not, 
you actually got to pay for it. So we don't know the MSRP yet of Concord, um, but I don't think that's one people are really going to pick up very much. Again, it looked good. It looked great. I was hoping for another kind of Fallout or like Outer Wilds maybe, um, or uh, Outer. I think it's Outer Outer Worlds. Maybe that's it. Or maybe another kind of border Borderlands game. The world building could be really good in that game, okay? A lot of people, even during the chat, were like, ooh, uh, while I was watching the live stream, hey, it could be like Guardians of the Galaxy. This would be great. And then 5v5, and it was just, boo. Like, people were just not excited for that. So honestly, did you guys take a look at it? Again, I didn't show every single game. I just narrowed it down to probably the biggest ones of the showcase. Again, it's 35 minutes. If you want to, you can take a look at it uh, for yourself. It's on IGN. It's on Game Ranks. It's It was on, uh, of course, Sony's page. So it's all over the place. You can find it pretty easy. But yeah, this one, you can miss it. it it's not really going to tell you anything new. There's not much you're not going to see in headlines somewhere else or just shorter videos talking about it. So... What do you guys think? How did you like the showcase? Leave it. Uh, leave your comments down below. Of course, again, you can always follow me at Gaming Garbage 22 over at YouTube. Don't try to the uh, Twitch and then our Discord server, which link in the description for that. But yeah, you know we got a lot of other showcases coming, and ultimately, um, there's there's roughly probably eight a year. And uh, I mean, we got two from Xbox, we got one from Nintendo, we got two from Sony, we have. Sega, Ubisoft, I'm surprised EA doesn't have one, Summer Game Fest, Game Awards. I mean, there's just a ton of these. And how many times are we going to see more of these games be promoted, um, you know, during that time? We'll have to see. So anyway, thanks for tuning in, folks. Again, this is a podcast. If you enjoy the kind of the states of gaming um, or some of the news, uh, I do have... Uh, Oh, excuse me. It's late. Um, I do have a playlist podcast for those. And, uh, yeah, if you're interested, uh, go ahead and check those out. So, until next time, folks, I'll see you after Summer Game Fest. Have a good one.